see. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live event discussing the alternative materials section of the Waste Some Materials Keybook. Um, we apologize for the technical um, difficulties. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I became a conservator because I can't stand working with computers. Um, so uh, we're recording this and any questions um, at the end, uh, we are asking that you write them in the comments section and um, we'll get back to you with, um, with the answers uh, as soon as we can. Um, I'm going to start by introducing myself. My name is Kim Kratzen. I am the co-director of Waste and Materials at Key Culture with Justine Rubold. Um, and I'm going to answer a few general questions about myself and discuss my takeaways working on the Waste and Materials Keybook. Um, so I'm going to start with the first question, which is how I started my journey into sustainability. Um, well, I had a strong connection with nature as a child. I grew up in Western Pennsylvania and was always out in the woods fishing with my father. Um, and then in the 90s, growing up, um, the environmental movement entered public education, thank goodness. And I became active in my high school um, as the president of the environmental club. And um, there, I, my first sort of taste of activism was um, we had paper recycling bins. Uh, however, my fellow students weren't using them correctly. There's, you know, bubble gum and food and people were just kind of using them as a second uh, receptacle for garbage. And I went to a faculty meeting um, and gave a very impassioned speech to the teachers at my school and um, encouraged them to enforce the paper recycling policies. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah. So that was... That was kind of my first taste of sustainability um, activism, and uh, I'm happy that it's continuing with key culture. Um, what is my favorite section of the key book? Uh, it's really hard to choose favorites, um, but I feel like the most important uh, and informative section um, is the synthetic waste section, because uh, as we know, they're or unavoidable in collections care. And um, we're not going to see the eradication of Tyvek and polyethylene foams anytime soon um, in museums and institutions, uh, mostly because they are inert and durable and don't decompose. Um, so in the section for, waste, for synthetic waste, uh, we tried to provide information of, about recycling and how it's not always viable for these materials, even though it's theoretically possible. Uh, and instead, and kind of encourage the reduction of the consumption um, of these synthetic materials and uh, provided tips for reuse, um, which then hopefully um, people are going to employ not only in their institutions, but, uh, but also potentially organizing um, initiatives to repurpose or, or reuse these materials um, within their communities as well. Uh, what was something I learned while researching the key book? Um, yeah, well, researching the key book, uh, what was very striking to me was sort of the rampant greenwashing from, from corporations. Um, as my colleagues from Key Culture already know, I spent a large amount of my time writing emails to companies and asking them to clarify their claims of sustainability and, and what is meant by compostable and biodegradable. And, you know, these words were being thrown around, um, without much explanation. And I felt like it was very misleading. Um, so that was, I think the most, the most striking thing that, that I, that I uh, encountered while working on the key book. Um, and then to, to sort of like, um, link on to that, uh, and I harp, 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 harp on this quite often in discussions, but the, um, industrial composting facilities, um, are so uncommon and so few and far between. I think the number is 185 of these industrial compost facilities exist in the U.S. as of 2018, um, which means that whenever a company claims that their plastic is compostable, um, there's a large chance that, a high chance that an industrial compost facility, you know, isn't, doesn't exist in, in your city or municipality. Um, and so, it's uh, hoping that, that people sort of inform themselves and, and do their own research uh, into whether or not these materials are a viable, sustainable solution for them. 
Um, and uh, yeah, also just more in line with that discussion, um, during our research for these sustainable solutions, oftentimes more questions arose than answers uh, because there isn't one set concrete set of solutions that can be applied universally. Uh, so we are, one of the main tenets of this key book was to encourage people to do their own research and figure out their best solutions for themselves. And, um, and hopefully we brought a lot of misconceptions to light uh, and hopefully that's encouraging for everyone to become active and demand better solutions from, from corporations and waste management um, and their institutions. The next question is, um, if I had a magic wish, wish and could change one thing in the field of museums in respect to sustain sustainability, what would that one thing be? Um, this is interesting because I immediately thought of something that I read in the Energy Key book recently, um, that museums, the, the, well, the most problematic issue in terms of carbon emissions for museums is from the buildings themselves. Um, 65 to 70% of carbon emissions from museums come from the building. Uh, so I guess my magic wish would be to retrofit museums and upgrade all of their systems. Um, and that's including the HVAC and lighting um, so that they're operating more efficiently and uh, they can reduce the amount of their carbon emissions and um, de detriment to the environment. Um, but unfortunately, because my magical wish won't come true, I encourage everyone to take a look at the key book for energy and um, and go through the, the very clear and succinct steps in improving energy efficiency. Um, the energy key book is downloadable for free on our website. Um, uh, my magic wish in terms of materials, however, would be that materials would never get dirty or deteriorate. Um, and that means that they could potentially be reused over and over again infinitely in collections, care and pack and its packing materials. Um, and for the objects in museums, that would mean that it would reduce the need for energy expenditure in storage and conservation measure measures. Um, there's also a chance that it would, uh, yeah, it would, it would make conservators, um, unnecessary, but I'm willing to take that hit for the greater good. Um, um the next question is what do I do for work when I'm not creating content for the Waste of Materials Keybook. Um, I am the resident conservator at Studio Olafur Eliasson in Berlin, um, which is a working artist studio. Um, Olafur is a Danish Icelandic artist known um, for his light installations, uh, most notably the weather project at Tate Modern. He is also known for addressing uh, environmental issues and in particular climate change with works such as Ice Watch, which is the public display of 12 large pieces of ice sheet from Greenland that are arranged um, in a clock formation um, in an attempt to bring attention to climate change. Uh, and at the studio, I wear many hats um, responsible for repairs and in-house conservation treatments. Um, I consult other conservators in their treatments of the works. I document and write installation instructions for the artworks. Uh, and most recently, um, we started working on a sustainability audit in the studio uh, a few years ago, and I focused on um, finding sustainable packing materials and solutions, which then ties into my contribution to the Waste of Materials key book. Uh, and the last question is, what is my favorite museum? Um, I would like to focus on Berlin museums, um, bring attention to some of them. Uh, in Berlin, I would say my favorite museum is the Martin Gropius Bau. Uh, it's a contemporary art museum. Um, I love it because of its curatorial programming. Um, the exhibitions are always very topical and thought provoking. Um, this building itself uh, is incredible. It has this massive foyer. Uh, in the center, which allows for larger scale installations. Um, and uh, I also experienced in 2010, Olafur's show in Innenstadt Alsen, um, which was just like a mind blowing immersive show uh, that also led to my interest in working um, for him at a studio in Berlin. Um, so that about wraps up the questions about myself. Um, if, again, if there's any, any Questions about the alternative materials section, please, please write them in the comments. 
um, we can continue this dialogue uh, in that manner. So thank you very much for tuning in and um, yeah, hope to hear from all of you.